Local support for News 6 has been provided by the Northwest Ohio Educational Technology Foundation, Bowling Green State University, and the members of WBGU-TV. I'm Holly Wagner from St. Joseph Elementary School in Fremont. Welcome to News 6. With today's first story, here's Ray Ackerman. Dolls may be toys for children, but our first story today will show you that a love for dolls is, can last for, far beyond one's childhood. News 6 has just visited Shirley Pot Potridge's, where more than a thousand dolls of all ages and types from all over the United States have found a home. Here's Juan Martinez with the story. Where can you find Princess Diane, George Bush, Muhammad Ali, and Elvis all on one shelf? What got you interested in collecting dolls? Well, I got my last doll when I was 12, and from then people gave me dolls through the years. And after that I started buying the TV character dolls, and I guess that's what started getting me the other dolls. Where did you get that particular doll? Well, when I was 12 years old, I got this for Christmas for my mother and father. It was my last doll they got. The, the apron is the original apron on it, and the clothes are different, but I put them on extra, so. And it was back in 1947 when I got this doll. What are your dolls made of? Most of them are made out of uh, um, porcelain and cer ceramics and cloth, and I have got one made out of a broom. I've also got one made out of a clothespin. I've got one made out of a mop. Do you have any favorite dolls? Well, really, they're all my favorites, but to pick one out, I guess I would take the 24-inch Cupid doll, because I have 40 different Cupid dolls, range from 2 inches to 24 inches. And then I got my sister's last doll, and since she's gone, that's like my remembers of her. Today's News 6 is produced by the 6th grade class of St. Joseph's Elementary School. St. Joseph's Elementary School is located in Fremont. Fremont was founded in 1817 and has a population of about 17,600. While some people have a special love for dolls, Merwin and Shirley Chambers are fascinated with dogs. Next, Aaron Sheets will bring you the story of the Chambers dogs. Curiosity killed a cat, so what will happen to Merlin and Shirley Chambers' dogs? I say that you lead a dog's life, is that true? Yes, it is. Uh, usually we get up in the morning about 6 o'clock, and until 11 o'clock that night, seven days a week, we're working with dogs doing something. I mean, feeding them, training them, exercising them, taking them to the vets, and going places with them. So it's a total consuming of our life right now. What types of dogs do you have? We have the Labrador Retriever. It's a sporting dog, bred for hunting and retrieving. And they come in three colors, the yellow like I have here, the black, which is pretty much what everybody thinks of. And then now we have quite a few chocolates now. So they do come in three colors, the yellow, black, and chocolate. How do you care for your show dogs? Well, basically, this, the show dog starts with breeding. We try to breed animals which have no hereditary problems and have all the traits of a good Labrador. Then after they're born and well, we try to keep them on a real good food program, a good exercise program, and a good training program so that they are very well adapted to the show world. 
Each week, New 6 asks the 6th graders a different survey question to learn about the thoughts on various subjects. But do the 6th graders like these questions? Here's what we found out. Hi, I'm Matthew Metter, and I'm here to ask you the Kids View question, which is, what do you think of the Kids View questions? I think the Kids View questions are neat because the kids get to speak out. I think they're a good idea because they let kids know what other kids think about different topics. I think the questions are good because we get to see what other kids think of the questions, too. Our last story will take you to the Rutherford B. Hayes Presidential Center in Fremont to learn about the life of the 19th President of the United States, Rutherford B. Hayes. This old house is brought to you by President Rutherford B. Hayes. What is the Rutherford B. Hayes Presidential Center? The center is the home of the 19th president of the United States. We're a research and educational institution. We tell people about the president and his life and times. How many rooms does the center have? The president's home right here has 25 rooms, unless you count the bathrooms, and that uh, takes it up to 33. The room we're in right here, for example, is the drawing room, and you may be able to see right over my shoulder a picture of the president of the United States. How does the center benefit the community? We like to think that uh, people in the community are proud of the fact that a president lived here. We attract about 41, 42,000 people a year to the community and they learn about the president and about Fremont, what it was like to live in a small town, and they often stay over and visit the shops and uh, stay in the motels and uh, eat in the restaurants. Does anybody still live here? Not anymore. In late 1966, I believe, uh, the Hayes family moved out of the president's home and made the decision to turn it over to the public. And that means that you can come here with your group today and see and learn about the president. Step this way. If we'll stop right about here, we can take a look at one of the first large pictures that greets us here. And this gentleman, who looks a lot like President Teddy Roosevelt, is our president's son. Webb Cook Hayes I, and he was better known as Colonel Hayes. And he was one of the few president's sons who won his own Medal of Honor, the Congressional Medal of Honor, as it's sometimes called, in 1899 in the Philippines. And he founded this institution in honor of his father and mother, President Rutherford B. Hayes and, uh, and his wife Lucy, in 1912. And in 1916, the museum building over here first opened its doors. That's all for this week's News 6. Thank you for tuning in. Join us next week when Oakwood Elementary School visits News 6. Local support for News 6 has been provided by the Northwest Ohio Educational Technology Foundation, Bowling Green State University, and the members of WBGU-TV.